have Vasana and uh, Anok. Uh, they are here to basically talk about how the British Council has this campaign along with KDU called Hashtag The Climate Connection, uh, which brings people from around the world together to meet the challenges of climate change. And uh, they do this through art and culture, education and English language. It is about ideas, innovation and real change where they use projects and they have gone out to schools and involved school students and as a whole community they are trying to empower the youth and themselves to basically make a very impactful change in the environment. So here we have um, Vasana, uh, Vasana Sundasingha. She is attached to the Department of English uh, Languages of uh, General Sir John Kutalawala Defence University and she is an active citizens uh, facilitator and the coordinator of the active citizens program at KDU and we have Anok Ferreira. Uh, she is uh, a British Council active citizen and a second year undergraduate of uh, General Sir John Kutalawala Defence University uh, reading for her BA degree in teaching English to speakers of other languages at the Department of Languages at KDU. So this is where we have these two guests to elaborate further on uh, the climate connection, right? And I'm sure you can find it on social media platforms under the hashtag the climate connection. All right. So um, here today we have uh, Vasana Sudhusingha. She is attached to the Department of Language of uh, Languages of General uh, Sir John Kotalawala Defence University. She is an active citizen facilitator and the coordinator of the Active Citizens program at KDU. And then we also have Anok Pereira. She is a British Council active citizen and a second year undergraduate of General Sir John Kotalawala Defence University, uh, reading for her BA a degree in teaching English to speakers of other languages at the Department of Languages at KDU. Hello. Hi. Okay. So um, let's get into the questions. Starting off, uh, the question is to Miss Vasana here. Uh, what is the British Council's Active Citizens Program all about and how was it implemented at KDU? Okay, Active Citizens Program is a global program facilitated by the British Council and it has partners in over 77 countries. It promotes intercultural dialogue, citizenship education and the role of youth in social leadership and social development. This program aims at empowering the youth to become potential active citizens uh, to do social action projects that would bring sustainability to the community around them. And this program was introduced to KDU by the British Council and since then KDU has become an active partner in the successful journey of the Active Citizens program. A group of 43 students uh, reading for the BA in TESOL and BSc in ADSC offered by the Department of Languages, uh, they are currently engaged in their social action projects and they've undergone six days of online training and their proposals have been accepted and they are working on reaching successful objectives of their projects. Okay. Um, then, as the program coordinator, what strategies have you implemented at KDU to make the students motivated in taking part in this program? I know, uh, getting the students motivated, uh, yeah, that's an interesting question because we basically implemented three strategies. First one is that we've included it as a part of the two degree programs offered by the Department of Languages, KDU. The students reading for the two degree programs, uh, Bachelor of Arts in Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages, which I call like BA in TESOL, and the Bachelor of Science in Applied Data Science Communication, BEAC and ADAC. The two degree programs have been designed to cater to the international standards which means we target at improving the skills of the students catering to the demands of the 21st century and the objectives of our degree program fully align with that of the active citizens objectives therefore we thought we should inculcate is that part of the degree program okay so that I mean, we were very successful in that because the students were motivated mm. when it's a part of their curriculum. Yes. So there is a lot of energy coming through the students. And secondly, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, during the initial stages of our project designing, we emphasized to them that they should make arrangements to design projects fully online. 
okay. which means they will not have any practical difficulties in reaching for their community yes. so that from the first stage onwards they were very keen on reaching their community while maintaining social distancing mm-hmm. and giving potential benefits with no hindrance due to the covid-19 pandemic and that was very successful and thirdly since they were first year undergraduates we were very close to them the staff was very interested in helping them from the beginning like right. we were very closely working mm-hmm. with them because once we give them attention once we give them kind of like motivation they really come up with good ideas so those were the three strategies that we implemented at KDU all and right indeed we were successful yes <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure your student can attest to that as well obviously <laughs> Okay so moving on to Anok right how did you first get involved in the British Council active citizens program Okay so from the start of our degree itself mm. during the orientation we were this was actually briefly mentioned that we would be participating in the active citizens program we weren't really given that much information so a few of us actually went and uh, just did a bit of research just to see what it was mm. and one of the british council members did come and speak to us briefly about it then finally only at the start of our second semester were we told we would be doing these active citizens projects this year uh, during this particular semester actually and we participated in the online sessions where we received training and by the end of the sessions we were actually asked to come up with projects and project proposals and presentations which we then presented and uh, successfully all of them were greenlit by the board of uh, judges okay uh, can you tell us about your uh, social action projects uh, which cater to the environmental sustainability and uh, what were the objectives of uh, your projects right so Uh, for our batch we actually had a total of 10 projects okay. um and they all cater to different things so out of them three of the projects actually uh, cater to environmental sustainability so out of them the first project was titled innovative eco friends mm-hmm. and this was where the active citizens of KDU were focused on encouraging school students to create innovative products mm-hmm. out of waste materials and the innovative products also had to be eco friendly So this way they uh, find a new use for formerly waste materials and this helps uh, to conserve the environment. So this objective for this project was actually due uh, was actually to increase the interest of school students. So this is to uh, give them that interest of recycling from a young age itself. That way once they reach adulthood they'll still continue those practices. Okay. Then going on to the second project this was um zero polythene eco bricks. So to give a small explanation eco bricks are plastic bottles that are filled with used polythene and they are generally asked to fill them to make a certain uh, to get them to reach a certain density. Mm-hmm. So what our active citizens did was they taught students at another school to uh, make these eco bricks and then what they did was they will collect those eco bricks and give them over to a recycling plant and they will create they will take those eco bricks and create flower pots which will then be donated back to the school's gardening club okay so that way again like something productive is made out of what was formerly waste material yeah and it finds a new use for something that would have otherwise been a hindrance to the environment yeah so it's something different and something that they can learn from and also use as yes. well so it's a yeah. whole cycle there it's a whole cycle there yeah All right And then finally uh, the third project was green stories and this one was very interesting because it uh, brought about another new concept which is the kokodama concept okay so this concept is actually uh, used to grow house plants and these house plants can dissolve dangerous chemicals in the air such as benzene and also transform carbon dioxide into oxygen mm. and the reason this is such a good method is it's very urban friendly as well So you can grow it in a really small space so it's very good for even if you live in an urban flat. Mm-hmm. So because of that uh this the objective of this particular concept of uh, teaching this particular concept to uh, I think it was mainly school children mm-hmm. uh was so that they could start practicing it and also these all of these projects actually the steps on how to make these uh innovative products mm-hmm. the eco bricks and even the kokodama concept they put up on their social media pages so even the general public can look at them and try them out as well 
Okay, so the Kokodama project was about planting. Yes. Okay, uh, in house and in house. So, yeah. for example, like the snake plant and things like that. Uh, somewhat. Yes. Right, there is okay. a certain type of fertilizer that you are taught to make, organic oh, okay. fertilizer, and that helps these plants to become uh, the Kokodama plants. Oh, right. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, wish we'd had that in uh, our time in school. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll move on to a short break, and we'll be right back. On E88.3. Got exposed to new business opportunities. Also with effective financial solutions, I started to see a seamless growth of my business. Welcome to a circle with guidance and effective plans that will take your business to the next level. Bank of Ceylon, SME Circle. Infuse your way of life with a touch of class and extravagance. Insist and secure a better place on earth for your life within the prime metropolis of Patharamulla. Talk to Prime Lands today. 0719661661. Mega Weekends on E88.3. Okay, so we are back with Vasana Subbasingha and Anuk Pereira and uh, we are going to jump right back into the questions. Uh, now, we were talking about the projects earlier and it was very interesting and eye-opening as to what you were doing. Uh, now, let's talk about what the positive impact on climate change through these social action projects uh, that your students have carried out. What are they? Yeah, as Anuk rightly mentioned, uh, most of our projects, you know, climate action projects are targeting at the students mm. because they will be the future of the country because when these practices are inculcated in them during their childhood, it's obvious that they will carry it out for the future which means reaching a sustainable environment conditions and our students were engaged you know currently engaged in 10 social action projects and out of them three are focusing on environmental sustainability and when speaking about the innovative eco friends project for about 25 participants from the eco club of holy cross college gampaha were able to create innovative products by the use of non-disposable waste material and as per the feedback we received from the teacher in charge of the school i mean it has been very influential in promoting students practice yeah. the recycling practices and as for the project on eco bricks for about 50 students from Kandavala Mahavidyala Ratmalana, uh, we had an initial session with them in which the students are currently creating eco bricks uh, so that they'll be handed over to a recycling mm. company and it's a timely solution for the you know unnecessary waste matter gathered yes. in schools and maybe in their homes or whatever so it's really a reliable solution yeah, for them. Yeah, it's more sustainable too in the future they can just you know these milk packets and this one time use plastic yes. material they yeah. can just gather it. And, and also as per the discussions we had with the teachers they said that it's really a huge issue in schools. I mean yes. it's everywhere. Yes. Like polythene and plastic. The straws and know, you know, right? yogurt cups and all that. All okay. that. So it's a good initiative. Yes. And as per this Kokodama plants um, project, so it emphasizes or it trains the students the significance of modern horticulture. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, for about 10 students, have successfully been able to produce Kokodama plants on their own. Wow. And I hope the other students now in, are in the process of mm -hmm. making them on their own. So, all these are ongoing projects. Yes. And by the end of the projects, we do hope to you know there will be attitudinal change yes. so that's what is expected attitudes and perceptions yes. regarding this yeah. whole scenario so at the end of the projects we thought of measuring the outcomes yes and i hope there will be a positive change among their among the students yeah just by talking to you i i'm very interested in the kokodama project really <laughs> you okay. said it's on social media right exactly, exactly. okay yeah. yes. hmm. Something so they upload for. videos, right. certain instructional videos because they've taken the help from agricultural instructors okay. yes. and due to the COVID-19 pandemic so they were in their own places and they've created the videos and it's uploaded yeah. on okay. social media so anyone along, can study from that. Yeah, yeah. along with like step-by-step -step text instructions as well. So yeah. exactly, like, yeah. This is, um, do you all have a page? Is it on your um, it's, uh, KDU page? It's not on the KDU page. We all, for, yeah, for yeah. each individual oh, for project. Each project yeah. Yeah. Right. We maintain a particular social media mm -hmm. page because then we have our own community catering right. to a wider yes. audience. 
Okay, that's a good idea actually. So now, how will KDU support and ensure the sustainability of these projects? And how does this program become, become useful in achieving the vision and mission of your university? Uh, yes, uh, General Sir Joan Kotalavra Defence University claims to have a unique history in providing a sustainable educational experience to young officer cadets and the day scholars. As indicated by the vision of KDU, we aim at creating potential graduates who are capable of serving the Tri-Forces, the state, the private sector catering to the global needs of the 21st century. It's important to note that the objectives of the Active Citizens Project by the British Council best align with the mission and the vision of KDU. Thus, this is an excellent opportunity for our students to do full justice to the motto of KDU for the motherland forever. Sierra Tatamai Kavada. So, they really emphasize on that. And further, KDU aims at providing quality graduates with higher degree of professional discipline who can work together with a high degree of social responsibility. So we don't just focus on the academic excellence, mm -hmm. but also creating graduates with a lot of positive thinking, leadership skills, and also the social with social responsibility. Okay. And um, therefore, our undergraduates are always motivated to engage in additional projects, which has the capacity to build them as potential graduates not only education but also co-curricular and extracurricular activities okay, it's a more wholesome approach wholesome approach because KDU provides a safe autonomous environment for the students to become independent learners so they are more empowered okay. to get engaged in extracurricular activities and develop their own capacities mm -hmm. especially leadership skills yeah. so that once they come out of the university it's not just a student with a degree but yes. it's a whole package of qualities responsibilities everything comes as full package okay and um, so in terms of measuring the sustainability of our project so every project is designed in such a way that the facilitators and the students evaluate the progress mm. right I mean even by the time the projects end, yes. we cater into maintaining the sustainability. Now, for instance, we maintain social media pages yes. in which uh, this community can pass message to someone else. Right. And even in terms of projects, what we do is we train them to pass this message to someone else. Okay. Now, for instance, in case of the Eco Club of Holy Cross College Gampaha, mm -hmm. we've trained the set of students to initiate it to another set of students yes which means ah. it doesn't just stop yes. but it goes to another set of students so okay what happened is uh, the active sense of kdu the first thing they started off with was teaching them how they could like showing them innovative products they could make yeah. then uh, creating a competition for them to create innovative products and now the plan is for those set of students now that their competition is over to have the competition next year for the new batch so as it goes on it's a tradition that gets passed down and it's a practice that gets passed down in as well okay so that's a good idea because we had something similar okay. and not 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 similar actually now that i can <laughs> hear about the projects and all okay. in our school uh, it was more to do with you know keeping the environment clean mm -hmm. after yeah. school or after interval we would go yeah. and collect uh, plastic garbage mm -hmm. which is yes. you know uh, all around and then it just died down after a while yeah. you know i don't think they had it maybe a year or so later yeah. you know initially that was all that motivation and things like that but something mm. like this is a good idea yeah sure because it really needs to go down and mm. for, from the from next batch to the one after because yes. if not it's not going to be sustainable and yeah. that's kind of the main point of this project and also the social media pages they do a great deal of Oh, yes. passing the message because yes. people can watch videos yes. learn and you know, practically work on these yeah. simple tips but it can bring potential outcomes in the future yeah. I mean individual contributions for saving in the environment yes. now how did you overcome the challenges you faced during the project implementation especially due to COVID-19 Alok okay so as Madam Vasna mentioned one of the first guidelines we were given when we were selecting our projects were make sure that it is pandemic friendly and that it can be held fully online okay so we actually had to do a lot of brainstorming in order to make sure to look at every angle and make sure that we could be able to do it uh, through online mechanisms or just safe social distancing mechanisms. Okay. 
so because of that we didn't really have that much of an issue because we fully planned it before we even presented the project to the panel of judges okay so other than that uh, i guess the other challenge that would come up would how how would we interact with that target audience yes so we actually made use of a lot of online applications that are very commonly used now so messaging applications like whatsapp and viber and then uh, video calls on zoom on microsoft teams we utilized a lot of those so that we could contact the target uh, target population mm. to keep in touch with them and this was actually quite a new experience for us as well so this is actually a challenge we would have to get through the fact that it is a new experience and it was quite a scary thing to undertake mm. to be able to make a change in society that is sustainable yes so you had to make sure that it is a positive change that it brings some good and you also have to make sure it somehow goes along as well so it is quite a big challenge but we had actually the help of our lecturers and advisors who kept uh, giving us advice who whenever we needed it would give us uh, the tools would give us uh, whatever we needed whatever resources we needed in order to make sure these uh, projects ran successfully Uh, so then uh, uh, who are the main beneficiaries of your projects and how did you engage the local community through online platforms so as i mentioned before the main beneficiaries for all three of the projects were school children mm. and this is because as both of us did mention we want to instill those values of protecting the environment of uh, finding environmental sustainable or stability methods uh, to students so that uh, while they are young they will learn it quite easily incorporate it into their lives really easily and that way once they are adults they can pass it on to their own children or to whoever they meet as well so that's why we focused on school students and as i mentioned prior to this um we utilized online platforms such as zoom microsoft teams whatsapp to communicate with them to keep in touch with them so as an example i could say that for both the green stories project which is about the kokorama concept and the one where the innovative eco friends where they created innovative products for both of those uh, the students sent videos and pictures of those products and the plants to the relevant active citizens okay so that is how they were able to keep up with the progress of the students right. so the students would constantly update them through whatsapp okay yeah all right so that's interesting because anyway no pe- people can't also say i know i did it and not have done <laughs> yeah, it <also."> exactly <laughs> Okay so you motivated them and then also you made sure that they did it. They did, yes. So how how did you approach a uh, school did you uh, just select an area or um, how it did depended that? on um, it actually depended on uh, which were available to us. Okay. So for innovative eco friends they focused on Holy Cross College Kampa mm. and actually the group leader was a past pupil of that stu- school. Oh, okay. So she was actually able to contact the principal and get permission mm-hmm. quite easily. Uh similarly uh I think our lecturers actually um gave group 2 this was regarding the eco bricks to Kandavala Mahavidyalaya okay so they were given uh, access to that school so okay. it just depended on um our own contacts as well plus okay. we had help from the lecturers as well to keep in contact with the schools okay all right so uh thank you for that uh, we'll move on to a short break and we'll be right back on E88.3 Infuse your way of life with a touch of class and extravagance. Insist and secure a better place on earth for your life within the prime metropolis of Patharamulla. Talk to Prime Lands today. 0719661661 Odris 70 years of excellence Odris products that have won the kitchen for 7 decades now in major stores island wide Odris Sierra today Siri sap today Dialog Television Postpaid Connections enable you to rewind and catch up over 95 channels and enjoy much more special benefits visit dialog.lk to order online Mega weekends on E88.3 
ओके सो वी आर बैक विथ वासना सुबह सिंह एंड अनोक फेरेरा एंड ना अर्ली वी वी डिस्कसिंग हाउ यू ऑल हैव रीच स्कूल स्टूडेंट्स एंड हाउ यू ऑल आर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग दिस प्रोग्राम राइट डू यू हैव प्लान्स टू ब्रॉडन योर एरिया मे बी रीच अदर स्कूल नाउ दैट यू हैव ऑलरेडी got the ball rolling with this project or how would it be yes so now currently we are making arrangements to begin the second phase of the active citizens training at kdu okay and yeah hopefully let's pray for better situation yes and we'll be definitely reaching out for a wider audience okay especially we plan to go for physical involvement uh, with the pan- i mean with the pandemic situation getting you know away from us mm-hmm. so that will be very important uh, strategically we'll be yeah. planning to reach for other schools and also the communities which really need the social action project yes. so the students will be targeting at addressing the issues uh, related to several issues mm-hmm. especially with regard to climate change and also anyway our students are focusing on 10 different projects again okay for this next phase as well so yes of course we are planning to go for maybe large ex- scale projects than this yeah that in the future yeah okay all right so um now as a lecturer and now as an active citizens facilitator uh, what has been your key learning or take away from this program and the message to university educators and students you have yes um i would say that this is a golden opportunity for youth to become empowered and actively engaged in the development of their communities this project is very i would say that it should be a part of their curriculum as well because as i mentioned previously it's not only education but yes. you need to create citizens responsible yes. citizens so active citizens of kd uh, of kdu um is one of the greatest achievements in our extracurricular activities yes. and i personally believe that as an university as a university educator as an active citizens facilitator it is important to realize that the undergraduates need more support mm. right once we engage in project every step or every step of their project planning implementation we need to support them yes and by the time we start giving them our inputs as well the students tend to develop their creative thinking skills imaginative power because they're soon after their school yeah. which means they're getting used to the new city education system but once we monitor them once we closely help them they will be more you know innovative in understanding the issues mm. understanding the core concepts so that's one of the key messages and secondly i think more collaborative work is very important because at kdu we are getting extensive amount of support from uh, different parties especially the department of languages of kdu oh okay yeah yes. so they help us tremendously and also the ad- adjunct lecturers yes they do a great deal of service to us by giving their expert knowledge okay. and also uh, and the it section of kdu they also provide us with technical support mm-hmm. for all our programs and uh, through mutual understanding and trust we were able to reach a successful outcome of this project so far and still it's ongoing yes and most importantly i'm very grateful to the vice chancellor of kdu major general milinda pires for giving his permission and blessings to implement these projects at kdu and his blessings and guidance are the most important things and it's the key behind our success we actually would also like to thank uh, brigadier vipula chantusiri the deputy vice chancellor of defense and administration and also professor sarath dammika the deputy vice chancellor of academics for give the valuable support and guidance given and also our dean mr kitsri amaratunga he is indeed a very supportive figure and giving us all motivation and strength yes. and the head of the department major viman shabai vikrama and the four mates od ms nalinika rajapaksha so all these key figures are behind the success that we made so far and thanks to british council also tushara and sanjeevani 
for all this guidance okay all right i mean it's all smiles here in the studio that really means that you all know them personally which exactly. means yes. they are getting involved in the project and yeah. you're not just saying it because you have to know so it really does sound like a group yeah. effort yeah sure. and you know i agree i completely agree with the one thing you said earlier uh, which is that something like this should be in the school curriculum exactly right yeah. because had it been there i mean even students i mean not everyone has a green thumb some students are just not that but it's good because it will motivate them at least to get the marks right oh, which yeah. means oh. at the end of the day they will learn something, something and something will happen when they leave leave yeah. school yeah and you also know? they'll carry that message to their community yes. now if siblings teach each other mm. it's a family thing so yes. they need to pass on from one yeah. person to the other yes and you know if they see someone throwing garbage somewhere or just litter mm-hmm. just sometimes you eat the ice cream and you throw away the paper somewhere yeah. you know without finding a garbage can or just putting it in your bag or your pocket yeah. right but i think it depends on you know the way you're brought up firstly and also the education system and what you all are doing is really integrating that into them yeah. which you know should be commended because not everyone is doing that yeah. you know now now the focus is unfortunately on other things yeah. whereas this is the only home we have yeah. right you might as well protect it so <laughs> a lot of it is actually just taken for granted yes yeah. that's 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 a problem there should yeah. be some attitude and change mm. in them which will result in positive impact yes. for the future yes. mm. okay. in a matter of 10 years but yes. hopefully yes. hopefully yeah. yeah hopefully something happens before that but at the rate you all are going i mean i'm sure you all can reach more schools and at least here yeah. within sri lanka we can really make a positive change and a and a noticeable one noticeable yeah. one yes okay what support now do you get now earlier on she mentioned yes. but as a student what support have you got so we actually got a massive amount of support starting from even just the training sessions uh british council gave us a very thorough knowledge about how we can look at an issue through multiple perspectives how the same issue won't be viewed the same by different parties so uh they were giving us that training to look at things through other people's eyes to teach us basic empathy and also to look at ourselves as well and to figure out what are our strengths and how we can utilize them when bringing about our social action projects and then we went on to start our social action projects at least to build them up and madam vasana and all our lecturers actually gave us quite a lot of support because it even if it was just to tell us okay maybe rethink this area of the project because this might not be sustainable or to just uh, figure out how you're going to be able to reach them little ways to just fix our projects and tune them up so that they will run smoothly and that was actually a massive help for all of us and going on our own peers as well our would our own classmates we would uh, constantly help each other with each other's projects we would find context for each other uh, it was a very large group effort in order to bring this about so we had a lot of help yeah this is this is a big project and of course you need that support and it's good that you're getting it especially from people who are able to uh, you know help you along the way um, then and especially one more thing dr bimali and dr, dr. charit yeah, yeah. we need to mention about them too because they are junk lecturers but they really yes. do a great support dr bimali indratna from university of, of york, york and dr charit selva from university of salford uk okay. so so they, while they are they are also despite the time differences they will come for like morning meetings as well in order to help us even if it's late night even if it's late night they will be there just to assist us and to help us well and bimari actually for my particular project she was constantly because it was something along her purview so she was constantly telling me okay you can fix this so no matter the time of day to be honest we would receive the help we needed oh. yeah it was like a family like we work like whatever yes. the time it is it's immaterial yes. we just a get together and work like you know the presentations for the late night oh. even the dean hod everybody yeah. is like really committed to yes. this and it's very motivating you know the students especially to see how the administration is giving them all yes. this support and okay. as well on how quickly the students were able to um pick a project and figure out the details as well 
so um our projects are very varied as well so it was interesting to see the many different points of view for each particular project so it was quite heartening to see that the students always felt that they are not alone okay, like yes. it was like a family working together like supporting each other because these are just fresh students in yes, university yes right. when yeah. they get the feeling like okay we are with you all the time so then they could es- come up with yeah challenges. especially since none of us had met physically <laughs> that is that's the most important that's the thing i was going to ask you because earlier you were talking about zoom meetings and all that yeah. and have you all still met or? uh we met for a examination of, oh, yeah okay. a couple of times yeah just a few times but other than that we hadn't really met each other physically but the bond was strong yeah <laughs> I I I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and especially now seeing you now you you are a teacher and she's a student but your rapport right now even it's just so warm and you know very friendly. So yeah. of course that just shows that you all really have been putting your work into these projects and really working with each other. Yeah. So you all know each other very well. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good <laughs> learning environment overall. Exactly. Yeah. It is. It. I really it's see this that. This autonomy that we practice empowerment where yes. they, they feel free to come up with their own idea so that we sharpen up them yeah. Yeah. and i guess it's very approachable as it well. is very they approachable are, we yes. are we are actually welcome to approach the lecturers despite if we have any issues to talk to them to tell them my issues and we can be very open about what uh, what are our difficulties or even just what makes us happy <laughs> so uh, it helps and it's a really good environment and it's really comfortable Okay. even through active citizens the yes. aim is to create mutual understanding and trust exactly oh among yeah the communities so okay yeah the so that's kind of yeah. working yeah. with you know, yeah. 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 you all as well <laughs> yes <laughs> all right now what is one key message you wish to give sri lankan youth volunteers youth networks and leaders on how they can come together to contribute to positive climate action at a national level Okay so this is actually a question that did stump me for a while uh but the thing is that okay so we live in a challenging period i will say that we live in a time where pandemic has caused us to be socially distanced from one another we can't meet up with our friends and we are not able to even go to our educational facilities and due to that like it's there's this common mindset that it will be difficult to implement a social action project based on these restrictions yeah but in actuality once we were able to once we took the first step which anyway the first step is always the hardest yes um once we took that first step we were able to do our projects so uh what happens is people have this idea of doing a project but they are not sure on how to implement it so the first step of any project should be carefully planning it out basing it on um your current situation the situation of the community and using that you don't need to be disheartened at the hardships of like the current situation instead if you carefully plan you can uh, do that project so my message would actually be to not get so worried or scared that this project once you start it it won't go through because while that could happen failure is something that will be a stepping stone for all of us so in the end just try it and who knows actually uh because we did these projects we didn't expect i don't think any of us ever expected for it to have such a good feedback because um the first group actually mentioned that they didn't expect so many students to send in products <laughs> so they were quite they were quite blown away at how willing the students were to take this up yes. so uh you we don't really know the outcome of a project unless we try it so my thing would be don't get disheartened at your current situation just try it even if you fail that will be a stepping stone and you can try again so that would be my message to other youth okay and if, if touching on uh, something you just said even the brick that you were talking about earlier i had not heard about that at yes. least not in sri lanka yeah, then even the it, kokadama concept is something new to sri lanka yes it's very new even actually until those projects were presented i had no clue about them either <laughs> So it was a learning experience for all of us and the fact especially to urban 
communities, yes, urban communities where there is not much space. Yes, there's not much space. Apartments, apartments and all. And all. Mm. So this is something productive, especially this organic fertilizer. Yeah, especially because urban areas develop a lot more waste than other areas as well. Yes. Especially um, like materials that don't decay. So because of that, the eco brick concept and even the Kokinama concept really help to. um reuse and make sustainable futures yeah because even the kokodama concept right now there are people who live in apartments and of course if you live in an apartment especially those uh, ones on higher levels mm-hmm. you see a lot of smoke yes and smog Uh, so it's good to have a plant that will actually clean, and clean, your, yes, and clean their mm-hmm. in your apartment because at the end of the day, irrelevant of how far up you are you living, are, you it it still you know the pollution is there. It's it's just inevitable at this point, yeah. especially you know within Columbus Columbus. 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 on E88.3 Real wood apple? Nice. The sound of taste brought to you by Sri Lanka's most premium ice cream with our finest dairy cream infused with the freshest wood apples. Highland Premium Ice Cream Real Wood Apple Flavor Fit for a King. Dialog Television Postpaid Connections enable you to rewind and catch up over 95 channels and enjoy much more special benefits. Visit dialog.lk to order online. DFCC Aloka partnering the aspirations of Sri Lanka's women call 0123500055 for details DFCC Bank keep growing Okay so we are back with uh, Vasana and Anok and we are continuing our discussion uh, so now we've been talking about uh, the future active citizens right and uh, what message do you have for them the ones who want to join you know later on so my thing would be to just take that step don't doubt yourself because uh one thing i learned personally was and i wasn't someone who was very i'm not someone who's very forward about making a change i want to make a change but uh sometimes i get demotivated because i sometimes think i'm not outspoken enough i don't think i'm determined enough mm. so don't be little your own capacity to make a change don't think little of yourself and just believe that you have that capacity and just take that step to uh working um and becoming a active citizen it just starts with that little thought inside yourself of i want to make a change so my advice would be just believe in your own capacity and think about how best you yourself can make a change uh, and align it with your strengths it doesn't have to be in the same way everyone else is doing each of us have our own different strengths uh, weaknesses so figure out what works for you and figure out how that will help you make a change in your society and work through that okay so that is that would be my advice because um when you think about active citizens you think about someone who has to be very vocal who will attend uh, sometimes attend protests and that's the general mindset but in actuality you can be just someone who blogs about it who can blog about it and even just make videos about little changes you make in your life yeah, so okay. that somebody can see those and be heartened to make a change themselves mm-hmm. i've seen a variety of people online who make art to show how are uh, how we should change as a community in order to uh, bring about good in the environment mm. so these little ways help you to become an active citizen and once you start doing that you'll be able to make larger changes in your community and to other pe- and to people outside your community as well yeah for example you can use social media i mean i see people on instagram and tiktok and making all these videos so yeah. why can't you make something i mean if you are interested in that platform exactly. then you could yeah try integrating this concept this, with that yeah so with our students now they are running social media campaigns on yeah. other thematic concerns too creating yes. videos on their own oh, yes. where they freely express what they feel yeah like what are the vulnerable community especially they are focusing on the gender equity mm-hmm. and gender all equity. other concerns and also and actually yeah one of the biggest uh, one of the actual uh, the campaigns that i'm actually very much a supporter of is a campaign against body shaming okay. mm-hmm. and 
this is something that one of our groups is conducting and it is a social media campaign and they have pages where they speak out about it they actually take videos of uh, they get videos from other people mm -hmm. and they speak out about their own experiences about being body shamed because it is a common thing in Sri Lanka yes. as well all these aunties <laughs> yes. yes at weddings at weddings <laughs> <laughs> typical yeah they yeah. get invited also and have to say things also <laughs> so yeah so it was like and it's not just that also so there are campaigns about cyberbully against cyberbullying so just you don't have to uh, you don't have to think about uh, what everyone else is doing if you have something and you feel like it's a positive change start talking about it start making if you want to make content about it make content about it mm -hmm. someone's going to see it and be and like it mm -hmm. so just it will be a source of empowerment to somebody else yeah. like yeah. the marginalized communities exactly and people who are alone maybe there are facebook users instagram mm. users, users who feel so down that mm. they are being criticized yeah. but it shouldn't be right yeah. Yeah. they should be empowered so this is for youth making their voice right. for what is right mm. and i do yeah. think that this is something really important yes, for every is. citizen yes youth especially yeah. mm. Okay. Uh, now let's say if someone out there listening or watching wants to uh, join this, right? Uh, is there a way for them to do it as in to be a future citizen or to uh, maybe start their own one or maybe join your one? <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> Yeah so I think mm, there is plenty of opportunity to join through the British Council mm -hmm. there is so much of support given throughout the entire process mm -hmm. and they can uh, check the website mm -hmm. active citizens yes. british council okay. and they can make arrangements and they can contact and be a part of the active citizens team it's an international program catering to wi wider audience in yeah. more than 77 countries mm -hmm which is very approachable yeah. and they are very friendly custom mm -hmm. oriented program where they can contact and get themselves engaged okay and then in the future would you all have themes for your projects or will the projects go about uh, depending on um, what the students want to do uh, basically we focus on the sustainable development goals stipulated by the united nations yes. and our projects will be designing catering to that yeah so environmental sustainability will be one of our top priorities but other than that there will be project designing sometimes there are projects which cater to multiple sustainable multiple development sustainable. goals yes. so similarly we'll be planning on that okay yeah. currently there is already people who are volunteering to do different things so is that something you all would look at as well like uh, clean up beach clean up or is that not the kind of thing you all do but you all look at more uh, mm. projects which include recycling and things like that uh, yeah. the beach clean up as well it's it will be a good project it's just it has to be sustainable mm. it can't be just a one off thing and then everyone forgets about it it has to be something if you're doing a beach cleanup do it regularly yes find a group of people and like incorporate more people who'll be able to come and just continue doing this because that was one thing we were told make sure our projects are sustainable because if it's not sustainable and if it doesn't go for the long run there's going to be minimal change mm. so those type of projects are very good just so long as you try to continue them and keep them going okay so uh, what is one difficulty that you came across or one obstacle that you came across while doing your project? Mm. The pandemic. Yes, yes. 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 yes, the pandemic. That, that was the, the biggest <laughs> biggest limitation yes. for us because uh, but however st students and our lecturers they were, they have strategically approached it but the one of the limitations was that because we had difficulties in reaching for a wider community yes. and sometimes when contacting potential stakeholders because they had their practical difficulties as well in getting engaged through yes. online platforms I'm, and yeah. especially students right some of the students that we've catered to yeah. uh, as per the teacher some of them don't have access for mobile phones or laptops because we were catering to different schools yeah we were catering to different schools so depending on their financial situation Mission. sometimes they might have not have the technology that they needed knowledge to do that yeah. so that was one of the limitations it was, and yeah. because of that we had to limit our target population to like 50s and all but otherwise yeah. 
reached for we could have reached for wider audience mm-hmm. if we could have done it physically physically okay. so what are the grades like um school grade 6 onwards yes. 6 to grade 11 grade 11, because a level yes. students yes. are obviously busy, busy with all other so commitments so yeah. grade 6 is a good age because when they are grade 4 5 i think they are too young yes. to implement something but since grade 6 i think they can really come up with more innovative ideas mm-hmm. and yeah. continue, continue that yeah. active participation yes. i think that will be there So, uh, do you think it'll be easier once you move to more urban areas? That limitation that you were talking about of people not being as tech savvy. Uh, so yes, uh, in the time that would be in the time of the pandemic. But once the pandemic does die down, that would be when we can um, go and speak to people in rural communities. That's when the technological barrier won't matter because we can actually go and physically speak to them. Yes. and we'll be able to give them ways that they act that will be uh, within their capabilities within their financial capabilities as well that is where actually the uh, pandemic did stunt us a lot because we had to limit it to people who had this access who had access to zoom and all these other technologies that's up mm-hmm. and other social media networks yes but however i think in the future we'll be able to Reach give up. support to ones who really need it yes. ones who really need empowerment mm-hmm. okay so that's the gist of our whole projects like empowering the community yes mm-hmm. okay why do you say uh, the rural areas need more empowerment do you think that even the urban population would also yeah so th- that's also important that's why we cater now for instance our social media campaigns like instagram and yes. facebook pages i think they are reaching for a mm. more urban community urban community yes uh, and the there are some people who don't have access to all of that mm. right yeah. who are really left behind yes, yes, yes. So i think our projects are so diverse mm. that it goes for a you know wide array of audience mm-hmm. like not only urban but also rural communities yes. Yes. which make all the projects as a whole a sustainable outcome mm. to the entire yeah. society yes yeah i i agree with you because uh, what i was saying done uh when it comes to urban population there are a group of people who are very socially aware exactly. and who want to really litter mm-hmm. whereas that can't be seen much yeah. when you go to the outskirts because they are they just see lush greenery and they think yeah. okay everything is dandy but that's not the case it's so the you case, see yeah. you see a lot of people i mean when you travel out station mm-hmm. you see people just eating things and throwing it's out throwing of the bus and exactly. you know it just yeah. happens like even out of vehicles and it they just, just ruin the you know purity yes, of the yes, surrounding exactly. but the cost will be for the rural people because yes. they are just be leaving and then no one is there to you know properly recycle yes. them yes, exactly. so perhaps uh, in the tourist attractions yes. if the recycling projects can be implemented so that would be a great idea yeah actually yeah. because uh, i i believe this is a couple of years ago uh, the main tourist attractions in sri lanka they were just littered mm-hmm. and tourists coming from overseas were just taking pictures and saying you know look at these these are like heritage sites yeah, it, and things like it that it delivers yeah. a wrong message exactly. to the international because community because as populous we are not people like that it just mm-hmm. it happens so that you know it's just so commercialized these areas that yes. <laughs> they don't really yeah. uh, you know care about the environment That's because that it. just seems like a secondary thing yeah. but i think that also boils down to the fact that they're just trying to make a livelihood yes so is that some uh, thing that you would address in the future these areas exactly so because yes. yeah we yeah. have that in mind so we are having the training for the students yes. that, i mean in the future mm-hmm. and we are trying to inculcate all those qualities in them like mm-hmm. initially we give them this whole notion of being an active citizen yes. to think independently and look at their surroundings okay yeah. and see the pressing problems and then come up with their own solutions so then we shape up them and modify their projects mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Okay so uh thank you so much for your time is there any other thing you would like to add any message to um, yeah and we would like to thank British Council and EFM yeah. for giving us this opportunity it's yes. like indeed great to have a discussion with you Kenzie that yeah. was very interesting because <laughs> it, it was like more of a very informal discussion oh, yes. that we didn't really feel that it yes. was something <laughs> well i'm glad you're comfortable <laughs> very comfortable indeed <laughs> 
All right, so thank you very much. So that is uh, Vasana and an Anok for you. Uh, well, I wish you the best of luck, and I really hope this project and you know your future projects really take off in a very meaningful manner. Because I really uh, learnt a few things, and you know, as I told you, it was genuine interest. And uh, I hope more people are able to approach you, and that you will really uh, develop as a community <laughs> as well. Yeah, so thank, thank you. you. See you. See you. See you.